Hi, you're welcome to Soma Solution. This is Solomon. Today we are going to talk about real numbers. We are going to look at how to classify the real numbers under the real number system. I will talk about real numbers. It consists of rational and irrational numbers. And then under the rational numbers, we have integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Now let's talk about them beginning from the natural numbers. The natural numbers begin from 1 to positive infinity. And the set of numbers that begin from 1 to positive infinity. They are also called counting numbers. You remember when you were in kindergarten, you've been saying this over and over again. Counting numbers. 1, 2, 3. Yes, that is the set of numbers we are talking about. Good. Whole numbers on the other side begin from 0 to positive infinity. So the set of whole numbers is a set of natural numbers together with zero. The set of integers begin from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's, it's someone can say the set of negative and positive whole numbers. It's also correct. Now let's talk about a set of rational numbers. Any real number that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. Or someone can say any real number that can be written in the form a over b as a rational number. Some few examples are two thirds, one fifth, negative one half, and four. Four is a rational number. I know someone will be asking, we are saying there are numbers that can be written in the form a over b. So then why are we saying four is a rational number? Yes, four is a rational number. It can be written in the form a over b, as in four over one, or 8 over 2 into so 4 as a rational number. But all these numbers we talked about, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, and the int integers, they are all rational numbers because they can be written in the form a over b or they can be expressed as fractions. Assuming I pick a number like 2, 2 can be written as 2 over 1. Yes, so it's also a rational number. Good. So we can see that all integers are rational numbers, and it is true. Now, terminating and recurring decimals like 3.5 and then 4.666 is recurring can also be expressed as fractions or can be written in the form e over b. So therefore, they are also rational numbers. We'll talk about terminating and recurring decimals in the next video. So terminating and recurring decimals are also rational numbers because they can be written in the form A over B. Good. Now let's talk about irrational numbers. Any real number that cannot be written as a fraction or any real number that cannot be written in the form A over B is an irrational number. Remember over here we said any real number that can be written in the form A over B or that can be written as a fraction as a rational number. So an irrational number is any real number that cannot be written as a fraction. You can mention this examples. E is an irrational number. Pi is an irrational number. Root 2, root 3, root 5. In fact, the square root of all prime numbers are irrational numbers. And they are irrational numbers because their decimal form are non-terminating and non-recurring. We'll talk about terminating and recurring decimals in the next video. Okay, now let's look at something. As you and I pick the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, if I multiply the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, they are all irrational numbers. I will get the square root of 6. Now, the square root of 6 is also an irrational number. If I pick the square root of 2 and the square root of 5, and I multiply them, I'm going to get a square root of 10. And the square root of 10 is also an irrational number. So therefore, we say the product of two irrational numbers is also an irrational number. All right. Assuming I pick the square root of 2 again, and I multiply it with any constant, assuming I multiply it with 5, I'm getting 5 root 2. 5 root 2 is also an irrational number. If I pick the square root of 3 and multiply it with 7, I pick the square root of 5 and multiply it with 6. 
all these are irrational numbers. So therefore, we say that any constant multiple of an irrational number is also an irrational number. You can check this with your calculator. When you punch 5 root 2 on your calculator, the decimal form is non-terminating and non-recurring. Alright, let's come back to the set of whole numbers. When you look at the set of whole numbers, you realize that you can find a set of natural numbers within the set of whole numbers. So therefore, we say the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of whole numbers. And this sign is pronounced as subset. So the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of whole numbers. Good. When you come to the set of integers too, you realize that we can find a set of natural numbers within the set of integers and also the set of whole numbers within the set of integers. And so therefore, we can also say that the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of integers. And also the set of whole numbers is also a subset of the set of integers. Good. And as we said earlier, all these numbers, the set of natural numbers, the set of whole numbers, and the set of integers, they can all be expressed as fractions, and so they are all rational numbers. So therefore, we can see that the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of rational numbers. The set of whole numbers is also a subset of the set of rational numbers. Then again, the set of integers is also a subset of the set of rational numbers. Good. So now in the set of natural numbers, the set of whole numbers, and the set of integers can all be found within the set of rational numbers. That's what we just explained over here. And also you realize that the set of natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and then irrational numbers all falls within the set of what? Real numbers. So therefore, we see the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of real numbers. And the set of whole numbers is a subset of the set of real numbers. The set of integers is also the subset of the set of real numbers. And the set of rational numbers is also a subset of the set of real numbers. And don't forget, the set of irrational numbers is also a subset of the set of real numbers. Yes. Good. So all these set of numbers are subsets of the set of real numbers. So now the set of real numbers consists of the set of rational numbers and then what? Irrational numbers. And then within the set of rational numbers, you can find a set of integers, the set of whole numbers, and the set of what? Natural numbers. You can view this classification in a different form. Assuming we have the set of real numbers, it consists of the set of rational numbers, which are integers, fractions, and decimals, and then the set of irrational numbers. We talked about them in the previous page. And then within the set of rational numbers, you have the set of integers, which begin from negative infinity to positive infinity. Also, within the set of integers, you can find a set of whole numbers, which also begin from zero to positive infinity. Within the set of whole numbers, too, you can find a set of natural numbers, which begin from 1 to positive infinity. So you realize that natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers all can be found in the set of rational numbers. And then the set of rational numbers and the set of irrational numbers, when you put them together, they come together to form a mother set of numbers, which is called the set of real numbers. Thanks for watching.